हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज वाटर पॉल्यूशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस व्हाट इज वाटर पॉल्यूशन देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ वाटर पॉल्यूशन टाइप्स ऑफ पॉल्यूटेंट्स इफेक्ट ऑफ वाटर पॉल्यूशन कंजर्वेशन मेजर्स रिलेटेड लेजिस्लेशन एंड वे फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट इज वाटर पॉल्यूशन The World Health Organization or WHO defines water pollution as the introduction of contaminants or pollutants into a water source to such an extent that it becomes harmful to human health or the environment. These substances can be either natural or human made and can have detrimental effects on the quality of water, aquatic ecosystems and human health. According to the WHO as of 2017 approximately 785 million people around the world still lacked access to basic drinking water services as per data from Lancet lack of access to safe water sources is a leading risk factor for infectious diseases including cholera diarrhea dysentery hepatitis A typhoid and polio all kind of pollution invariably contribute to the water pollution Air pollution pollutes the water bodies while land pollution filters down to the underground streams and oceans. Water pollution has multiple social and economic consequences. Now let's discuss about types of water pollution. First is point source pollution. When pollutants are released or discharged from a specific identifiable source, it is relatively easy to identify and regulate them as they usually have a single point of origin. Examples of point sources include industrial facilities, sewage treatment plants, etc. Point source pollution is usually subject to regulatory controls and permits. Second is non-point sources pollution. When pollutants enter the environment from diffused and unidentifiable sources, these sources often cover a broad area and are not easily traced back to a single origin. Common examples of non-point source pollution include sediment runoff, nutrient runoff from agricultural fields, etc. Non-point source pollution is more challenging to regulate and control because it arises from many dispersed sources. Now let's discuss about type of pollutants. Water pollutants are substances or agents that contaminate and degrade the quality of water bodies such as rivers, lakes, streams, oceans and groundwater. First is chemical pollutants heavy metals lead mercury cadmium and arsenic are toxic to aquatic life and accumulate in the food chain organic chemicals pesticides herbicides industrial solvents and synthetic chemicals like polychlorinated biphenyls contaminates water and harm organisms nutrients excessive levels of nitrogen and phosphorus from fertilizers and sewage can lead to nutrient pollution causing harmful algal blooms and oxygen depletion eutrophication it is the process in which a water body becomes overly enriched with nutrients leading to the plentiful growth of simple plant life biological pollutants bacteria and viruses pathogenic microorganisms from sewage animal waste and other sources can lead to water borne diseases in humans algae Algal blooms often caused by nutrient pollution can produce toxins harmful to aquatic life and human health and parasites organisms like giardia and cryptosporidium can contaminate water sources and cause gastrointestinal illnesses third is physical pollutants sediments soil erosion from construction sites deforestation and agriculture can lead to sedimentation in water bodies affecting water clarity and aquatic habitats thermal pollution the discharge of heated water from industrial processes or power plants can raise water temperatures harming aquatic organisms radioactive substances radioactive materials from nuclear facilities or certain industrial processes can contaminate water and pose health risk emerging contaminants microplastics Microplastics which are tiny fragments of plastic with a length of less than 5 mm that is 0.2 inches are produced as a result of plastic pollution and are found in the food chain and water bodies Now let's have a look at effect of water pollution first is environmental effects habitat destruction creation of oxygen depleted dead zone in ocean algal blooms food chain disruption and loss of recreational and aesthetic value 
सेकेंड इज इफेक्ट ऑन ह्यूमन हेल्थ कंटेमिनेटेड वाटर कैन कैरी पैथोजन्स दैट कॉज डिजीज लाइक कॉलरा डायसेंट्री एंड गियाडियासिस Exposure to chemical pollutants can lead to cancer, reproductive issues, neurological disorders, and organ damage. Excessive nutrients in water can lead to the growth of harmful bacteria, potentially exposing people to waterborne illnesses. Heavy metals and synthetic chemicals accumulate in fish and seafood, posing health risk. And drinking water contamination. Third is economic and societal effects. Water pollution can lead to economic losses in industries such as agriculture, fisheries, and tourism. Loss of livelihoods due to decline in fish stocks or reduced crop yields, and displacement of communities and social conflict over access to clean water resources. Now moving on to conservation measures. First is bio remediation. Bio remediation is a process that uses living organisms such as bacteria, fungi, and plants. to remove or neutralize pollutants from contaminated environments in situ bio remediation it includes treating contaminated material on site bio venting involves providing air and nutrients to polluted soil via wells to stimulate native bacteria growth bio sparging it accelerate the natural breakdown of contaminants by existing bacteria by injecting pressurized air below water table bio augmentation introducing microorganisms to a polluted area to expedite the degradation process ex situ bio remediation the contaminated material is removed from its original location and treated elsewhere land farming it involves excavating contaminated soil spreading it on a prepared bed and regularly tilling it to facilitate aerobic degradation by native bacteria bio reactors these are designed for controlled treatment of polluted solid materials or water and composting the natural recycling of decomposed organic matter into nutrient rich compost phyto remediation it involves the use of plants and associated soil microbes to reduce the concentrations or toxic effects of contaminants in the environment third is disinfection chlorination is the process of adding chlorine or chlorine compounds to drinking water use of ozone to disinfect water Fourth is government initiatives. Government has launched various program to combat water pollution. For example, Jal Jeevan Mission, National Lake Conservation Program, Amrut Mission for Urban Development, Ganga Action Plan. Now let's have a look at water related legislations. First is Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. It regulates and controls the discharge of pollutants into water bodies in India. provides for establishment of the central pollution control board that is cpcb at the national level and state pollution control boards or spcbs at the state level it empowers the cpcb and spcbs to set and enforce water quality standards and the water prevention and control of pollution cess act 1977 it empowers the central water board to collect cess on water consumed by persons industries etc collected cess acts as a major source of revenue to run the central and state water boards now lastly moving on to the way forward stringent environmental legislation and regulations by governments establishment of comprehensive water quality monitoring programs to track pollution levels in water bodies promote public awareness about the importance of clean water and the consequences of pollution adoption of industrial best practices to minimize pollutant discharges upgradation of wastewater treatment infrastructure including municipal treatment plants and to ensure the effective removal of pollutants adoption and promotion of agricultural best management practices including sustainable agricultural practices erosion control by re afforestation and management of construction site runoff invest in research and development of new technologies for pollution detection monitoring and remediation and involving local communities in water quality protection efforts Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, prelims based question. In the context of solving pollution problems, what is or are the advantage or advantages of bio remediation technique? One, it is a technique for cleaning up pollution by enhancing the same biodegradation process that occurs in nature. Two, any contaminant with heavy metals such as cadmium and lead can be readily and completely treated by bio remediation using microorganisms. Third, genetic engineering can be used to create microorganisms. specifically designed for bio remediation select the correct answer using the code given below 
वन ओनली टू एंड थ्री ओनली वन एंड थ्री ओनली और वन टू एंड थ्री यू कैन सेंड द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एंड नॉ मेज क्वेश्चन वाटर पॉल्यूशन इज अ प्रेसिंग एनवायरमेंटल इशू वर्ल्ड वाइड अफेक्टिंग इको सिस्टम्स एंड ह्यूमन हेल्थ वॉट आर द मेजर सोर्सेज ऑफ वाटर पॉल्यूशन एंड वॉट मेजर्स कैन बी टेकन टू मिटिगेट इट सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडे स्टेट्यून फॉर द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग